Good afternoon, everyone. Before I read the text for this coming Sunday for our sermon and our worship together, I want to update us on our worship status. The session called a meeting this past Tuesday evening, and after a lot of thoughtful deliberation and conversation, decided to suspend our in-person worship services again beginning this week. So starting Sunday, we will not gather in person for worship again. We did this out of a concern for our community, a concern for our neighbors, a understanding of what it means to be the church as expressed in 1 Corinthians when Paul writes, if one member suffers, they all suffer together. And we're interconnected with each other. And the session feels like it is, if not everybody can worship safely at this time, if people are excluded because of the pandemic going on around us, then we should suspend our services. Um, They took note of the rise in case numbers, the rise in hospitalizations, the limited capacity that our hospitals are facing, and voted to suspend our gathering back together. We did not set a date to come back together. Instead, we will look at hospitalizations, we'll look at case numbers, we'll look at the death rate in Lee County, and when there is a decline of two weeks, the session will gather back together to discuss our next steps, but that's going to be our metric moving ahead, is a two-week decline in the numbers, and so um, you can follow that on the Department of Health website. Wink News publishes those every day when they come out at 11 o'clock in the morning, and so we appreciate your support. We appreciate your prayers. Um, I know this is a a difficult time for all of us, and I know many people wish to be back together, as do I. We all long to be in worship together in the sanctuary. We long to sing together, to pray together, to hug each other, and um, and I regret that we are unable to do so at this time. But as I talk about in the sermon on Sunday, we know God is still with us, and God is still leading us, and guiding us in this time. And so with that, I will turn our attention to the text for this coming Sunday. It is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15, the call story of Moses. We're looking at a lot of Old Testament stories here over the next few weeks, and many of those do involve call stories. So I invite you to hear the text for Sunday. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, but it was not yet consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I, here I am. Then God said, Come no closer, remove your sandals from your feet, For the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I've also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And bring the Israelites out of Egypt. God said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you. And they ask me, Well, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. 
That is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. You know, this is a, a story that we probably have heard many times throughout our lives. It's one that is typically taught in VBS in uh, children's vacation Bible schools and their Sunday school curriculums. It's one studied in adult uh, studies as well. And again, this is the story of the call of Moses to be a shepherd for the people. And when we look about the call of it, I'm wondering if you heard elements of your call in this story. When hearing how God got Moses' attention through the bush that was on fire, but it wasn't consumed, how did God get your attention? Or how does God get your attention? What are some times that you can remember where you had to turn aside and see exactly what it was God was doing? I also wonder is, uh, you know, in the text it talks about God sees the cries. He hears the cries of the Israelites. He knows their condition. And in what ways can you remember that God saw, heard, and came to be with you as well? How do you remember God's faithfulness to you? And just like Moses kind of engages in this back and forth with God, are there times you ever tried to talk God out of calling you to a particular task? We'll look at these aspects and we'll look at some other elements as well as we move ahead in our sermon. I hope you'll join us online this week uh, as we worship together. And again, I thank you for your support, for your prayers, uh, not just for me, but for our elders and our staff and all of our leadership here at the church as we navigate this tough time together. Uh, don't forget to sign up for VBS on our website. Don't forget to remember and lift up each other and pray for each other. Let's pray together. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for calling us. We give you thanks for getting our attention. We give you thanks for hearing our cries and coming down to be with us. We pray that you continue to hear the cries we offer this day, the cries of our church, the cries of our community, the cries of our neighbors, and the cries that we hold in our hearts. Send your spirit among all of us and continue to lead and guide us through our wilderness journeys that we may come to worship you fully on the mountain that you have called us to be. Bless each of us and guide us in your ways that we may proclaim your love for us in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Friends, I hope you continue to be well, continue to take care of each other, and I look forward to seeing you at some point soon. Take good care. Peace.